Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkast mit Tom Reimann und David Bell. Yeah, let's blast. The blasters. Couple of blasters. Yeah. Just uh, a couple of blasting guys. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Hi everybody. Hello. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hype Cast, the Hype show Cast. where we get hyped sorry. about stuff and things. Never be sorry for being hyped. I'm one of the co-hosts, David Bell. Who are you? What's your deal? I am guest co-host Eric Barnes. Eric Barnes. Barnes. Eric that Barnes. Name. Welcome. That's my name. How's it going? Uh, it goes, man. It goes. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely goes. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether we I, like it or not, it just does. Yeah. No, yeah. We have no choice in mm-hmm. the matter. Um, yeah. Are you generally hyped? Are you hyped for... This is a, this is a spooky episode because this comes out on <laughs> Friday the 13th. So we got to be real spooky. Oh, spooky. Yeah, and we got a lot of spooky trailers to it discuss, is, too. Yes, horror season is upon us. Upon us. This is almost, I think it's all horror. Oops, all horror. <laughs> it uh, kind of almost is, yeah. Yeah, or at least vaguely horror. Um, horrifying, one would say. Weird. Horror or, uh, horror or spooky adjacent. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. of my my jams, but before we get started, Eric, what do you got going on? What 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 uh what's what's new in Ericsburg? What is new in Ericsburg? Well, what I got going on is I have been for the past one or two years been helping out uh, David Igo, who's been a uh, who is and has been a creative director over at sideshow collectibles and tweeter head develop a brand new toy ip uh, called monsters and uh. its kickstarter <laughs> has launched this week and i've been helping david uh with his creation and um uh, like it's his baby but i'm i'm one of the midwives that has helped write copy helped him with some ideas for characters and for stories and with lore and all that type of stuff. And the Kickstarter is for um, our first wave of action figures. It's a big homage to Street Sharks and Motu, Masters of the Universe, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all the stuff. It's uh, And quite frankly, it's, it's so much fun and... I would love to be able to help his vision and his creation of amazing toys. And we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, More toys, maybe expand to different uh, forms of entertainment through this IP and so on and so forth. But it's very fun. And um, yeah, the only way. Yeah. Uh, It looks awesome. No, no. Looking at the Kickstarter, it's great. I want, I want people to be able to find it because it's, it, it's tough to search for. So how do sure. how do people find it? Sure. Uh, Kickstarter.com. Uh, there's a lot of slashes, but the best way to do it is to search Monsters. M-O-N-S-T-O-R-S. And that way you'll be able to see the figures of Shamumu and Sting Cobra, two of the main Monstor characters. You can take off their limbs and make up your own Monstor as well. Uh, there's so many, we have so many different 
variants and add-ons and again all this is to create some awesome toys for adult collectors and kids alike can play with them as well uh it's so much fun i really wanted to be on hypecast because i know that your listenership uh would be interested in this type of thing and oh, yeah. i i'd be very uh it so if you like me and you want to help and you want to help me out uh check out the kickstarter see if you would like some toys or if you know of someone that you would like some toys there's um there is a, do- a toy donation or gift uh type thing uh you'd be able to use your toys to help donate to a kid uh cuz we have uh plans in place uh at certain tiers and at certain levels and at certain pledges that you know we donate to toys for tots for example there's a That's whole cool. bunch of stuff i uh but yeah go to kickstarter.com search for month stores uh david i'll provide you with a link if you could provide that in the episode description maybe uh if, sure i'll probably could. T- when i tweet it out it's probably the easiest way um but yes yeah, so I, I could do both um even better uh yeah that that definitely would uh help us out and again thanks for have uh, thanks in advance for having me uh always love to be on the hype cast always love to be with the gu folks and of course. Uh, yeah let's um thank you all in advance for uh just supporting fun stuff being made you know and it, it really does look fun it, yeah it very much reminds me of like teenage mutant ninja turtles i like that you can um swap their parts it looks like yeah um that's that's like really fun like it 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 just has the vibe of like a toy you grew up with that that you don't like it's almost like a like a like a mandela effect toy where you're like what are what were those toys you know what i mean yeah like it has that vibe which is really fun Mod stores have been around since 1993 david what are you talking where you're like oh what was that show you know like i i really (laughs) like i really like that um it's very cool so everybody check that out yeah it's definitely a love letter to all that stuff and we can come up with some original ideas and god uh so much stuff that i'm probably shouldn't talk about yet uh but the hope is you know we can reveal that type of stuff if this thing is successful and we can come up with different waves and That's you know cool. some maybe you know maybe some comics maybe something more uh who's to know who who's to know yeah we're going just by uh by the seat of our pants at this point and but uh yeah, but you thanks got again. plans yeah it's good to have yeah. plans for the future oh, yeah we got we got plans and you know who and you know everything's malleable it all depends on the success of this yeah. so uh thank you f- thank you for your consideration and for your pledges yeah. uh should you decide to do so but appreciate it this is way too long of a plug <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fine we're just we're jazzing we're hyping um jazzing well we should talk about trailers but first i i got I got some important folks to thank our beautiful patron producers, uh, starting with at nerd numbers. Thank you so much. Thank you to zero thank charisma. Thank you. Uh, thank you to 2001, a space Nolte, a space McNulty odyssey. Thank you. My favorite, my favorite odyssey. Yeah. Thank you to a turd curdling jump scare. Ugh. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Yeah. Thank you to AJ. Thank you, AJ. Thank you to Andrew. Eric deserves more hype, McGuire. Ooh, Aww, yeah. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you to Andrew. Andrew. How deser- demands a single act of kindness. We're working on it. We're working on it. I mean, uh, more than one single act, I would say, mm-hmm. is is required. All right, let me jump in here. Thank you to Asking Seven. Thank you. Thank you to Ballet Karate Hulk. Thank you. Thank you to BLT twenty two E W H V S B dash B exclamation point. Thank you to Boodler Boodleson. Thank you. Thank you to Brian, who Tom knows. Thank you. Thank you to Brockway Loves the Meat Millie. Oh yeah. 
Thank you to Burrito Says, Water, Gym, Sunscreen, Kung Fu, Ska, Self Care. Woo! And thank you to Chester's Profit. Thank you. I did a little uh, spooky cleaning for the producer nods. So just a heads up, uh, if, if your name accidentally got dropped off, let me know. Just did a little spring cleaning, and I'm always very self-conscious about that in case I accidentally dropped someone who should be on there. So give me this. So at the end of this, wait, wait till the end and then let me know. That's all. Um, but now it's time for trailers, starting with uh, a bigums, a fairly bigums. Uh, it was it's anticipated. Big. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's Wolfman. Two words. Wolf space man. This is not, um, not Wolfman with a hyphen, not nope. Wolfman merged nope. together, just Wolf. Not man. the Wolfman. Yeah, because they have to sort of figure out, you know, if you keep making Wolfmans, you got to figure out how to make them different, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. This is um, uh, Lee Winnell, who uh, uh, he did The Invisible Man, uh, uh, along with a bunch of things. Um, he's also an actor. But he, you know, he he kind of knocked it out of the park by directing that Invisible Man remake. He also did Upgrade. Um, mm. It's all to say that, like, the Universal monster stuff, Universal has been really adamant about cashing in on their monsters that they've had forever. And they tried the Dark Universe uh, with, what, the, the Mummy yeah. with Tom Cruise, they, they tried that to was, yeah. They tried to marvel it up. Yeah, and they realized that was stupid. And so, like, they got a lot of success with the Invisible Man, which was like, oh, what if we just modernized it and made it a straight up horror movie? What you think would be like the first thing you do with a horror property is go like make more horror. Um, yeah. And so it seems like they're they're trying that again with the Wolf Man. Um, you know, it makes sense that they get the person who did the Invisible Man. Um, I think there's been, people have been kind of weary of this because you, Universal, the Universal Studios, like Halloween Horror Nights had a Wolfman, co like, costume, yeah. and it looked yeah. bad. It looked like hairy, unhoused grandpa. Yeah. Kinda, that's kind of what it was. I don't think that reflects this movie personally. Not I, in the I, trailer, no. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure on this movie because they're like, man, we nailed it with the Invisible Man. Can we do that? You know, they, they're trying to recreate kind of lightning in a bottle where the Invisible Man was such a good premise for that character that it's like, can you do the same thing? And this, when was that Invisible Man movie? Do you remember? I I honestly don't know. I don't believe I've seen this current it's very Invisible good. Man. It was four I've years ago. things. Yeah. Um, it was a really good take and I, I just hope they didn't try to force it with this. Cause I, I, I think that that dumb costume they showed off, I don't know. Every monster looks dumb when you put them in a haunted house. Like, yeah, a maze. because yeah. it's not, because it's not made for a, a film release. You know, right. the budget is by design low because you're not dressing up a, yeah, a highly paid actor. You're dressing up schmucks like me. Right. Like be. if I... Like if I saw the Baba Duke in like a Halloween outfit style in like a Walmart, I would be like, "That's stupid." But like yeah. then you see the movie and you're like, "Oh, I get it." So like that's all to say that I don't think that's reflective of what this is. Of course, because all all those monsters in the movies, you know, there is uh, shot composition, music, mood yeah. lighting, all that type of stuff to help to help create the boo. Yeah, and you gotta create it's the boo. not. Yeah, yeah. It's not just uh, an underpaid makeup artist and an underpaid costumer putting things on an underpaid actor to walk up as close as you can and scream boo at you without yeah. touching you, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love a good so, stupid haunted house. Do you know um, what? Honestly, Universal should make horror minions, you know? Just yeah, take fuck it. The, if if they, I, they have to by now have some minion costumes that are disheveled over wear and tear and sweat just don't repair them don't throw them away get keep them discolored with human sweat or whatever it is and I just do, yeah release them into the horror nights just to just so they show up and go ba -da -da, or that would be amazing something. 
God, I I would go to Horror Nights if that were the case. I, I don't worked. Do, I worked do, a season do, there. Oh, did you now? Yeah, a long what, time uh, ago. What'd you do? What, were you I was a costume doing character? Tram. I wasn't doing costume stuff, but it was very uh. fun. It's very silly because they have to redress the whole place. So like they had Whoville and they had to make Whoville spooky. Like they, oh, that's what yeah. they do. They just redress or they just go like, welcome to our spooky Halloween Horror Nights. Here's some horror stuff. Here's some horror stuff. Also, the Simpsons ride is here. And it's like, is it spooky? And they're like, no, it's just the Simpsons ride. We just I- left it open. I did audition for Whoville at one point nice. uh, to be a character on there, but the issue was like my agent wanted me to keep my beard and, you know, for commercials and stuff. And right. Universal was like, who's don't have facial hair at all. And that's kind of, you know, like I, I'm not a fucking I, who then uh, I'm like, well, I guess I can't be a who then. Yeah. They, they want, you know, they wanted me to audition to be the mayor of Whoville, but yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. But yeah, this I I think this trailer looks good. Um it looks like they're it, it's interesting cuz the invisible man was kind of about um like an abusive ex-boyfriend and the gaslighting process and this very much seems like the wolf man is also going to be like a shitty abusive father. It is the vibes yes. we're getting. Yeah. Yeah, dom- domestic abuse horror in right. a sense. Because you look like, at the symbolism, what is a wolf man? It's someone who's one way, one second, and then suddenly another way. So it's like you can use that as a stand-in for we, alcoholism weirdly, and abuse yeah. and all that stuff. We're, weirdly, that's more Jekyll and Hyde traditionally, yeah. but but I, I could definitely see the parallels there. And, uh, you know, not to get too terribly personal, but as I watch this trailer, I'm like, ah, I've lived through this before. Right. <laughs> But it, uh, I don't. And, yeah, I guess I don't know how much they need to do that, or even how I. I don't. At this point, it's hard to tell how much that is like an a theme throughout. But it clearly is based on this trailer. Yeah. Uh, my my hope like, is that it's it's I, my hope is that it's balanced and it doesn't lean too much one way or the other, right? Because I don't want it to be like a throwaway thing, but at the same time, I don't want this to turn to pure beat on your head morality allegory i yeah. also want it to be about a wolf man that's part wolf part man i just not, think yeah. not a dark reflection of a man that has drunk too much and now hits his kids we've um, done yeah we've done so much werewolf horror and i think there's that kit harrington one that also seems like it's that and so that's all to say that maybe I mean, this is probably going to, like I said, I, I think this is probably going to be good. This director is very good. But I'm wondering if they should have done like Frankenstein first or something like they should yeah. have changed it up because what they're the pattern they're going with is they're taking these universal monsters and they're saying like, let's not put it from their perspective. Let's put it from the perspective of the people around him. So like yes. the Invisible Man, it was like a mad scientist movie, but it's like, what does it mean to be a modern mad scientist? is to be like a tech bro who's shitty. Um, mm-hmm. And then what it means to be like the someone who knows that person who's in a relationship with them. And that's a cool angle, but to do it sort of again, like when you look at the Wolfman, you're like, how do you tell that story? That's really the only, what or one of the few stories there is to tell with the Wolfman, you know? Yeah. Um, I, 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 and I can definitely see them being like, what if the Wolfman is the quote unquote nice guy, right? In terms of, uh, or at least as a parallel is someone that on the surface is kind, friendly and whatever, but has, uh, you know, when you dig deeper has well, a monster, uh, inside them. And it's that it's, it's hard to tell from the trailer one way or the other, but the trailer does its job in terms of, I'm I want to see what where they're going with this. Yeah. So it's tough. It's got like the Robin Hood problem, which is that we've made so many Robin Hoods that it's like, why do we need to make another? Um and uh, yeah. every new or Robin Pinocchio Hood. Pinocchio or yeah, yeah. They all have to kind of justify their existence and they usually fail to do that. So I think for people to want to see this, it's gonna have to show something new. And like going yeah. back to that that costume, I am kind of like, well, one way to do it is to make a uniquely different looking one, I guess, because they already did like the Benicio del Toro one they did. 
that one did the classic wolf wolfman look you know like we sort of strayed away from that for a while we were like what if a wolf a werewolf is a dog or like a more mm-hmm. of a monster and then they did the classic look for that one and then it's it's again like there's aesthetic challenges and there's thematic challenges where it's like how do you justify making another i mean um, maybe maybe the issue well not issue but you know how there's pre-wolf mid transformation then full on wolfman right yeah i'm under the impression and this again based solely off the universal costume i saw is like oh maybe it's more of we're going to make this wolfman a bit more pre transformation yeah a little more grotesque. and over it yeah and then maybe by the end of the movie he's like fully fledged wolfman yeah but, i th- i think um, i don't know leaning into body horror might be a wise choice because mm. we don't do that as much with wolfman yeah uh, say for american werewolf in uh london yeah but yeah. It, yeah ultimately i'm like i i have faith in this movie being good it's more of like are people gonna care about this movie which isn't you know i don't care that there's, much about that but there's a reason why it's being released in january yeah that's hard to tell because january is less of a sign of death these days because that's we don't true. we don't really adhere to the classic release schedules anymore yeah <laughs> no but, but at the same time these are being run by old ass executives that may th- think that uh, exactly that may not yeah. have may not be quick on the uptake so yeah. so it does say that maybe they don't have that much faith in it i guess mm. we'll see i'm excited for it yeah um uh next, i guess next trailer yeah next trailer this is uh hold your breath this is i is it old timey? It's got to be old timey. It's like dust, dust sure. crap. It's Sarah Paulson, um, in like, yeah, it's 1930s Oklahoma. That makes sense. There's a horrific dust storm, and there is some sort of ghoul, some sort of fucking something haunting her family. It seems, um, or is it? Or is it? Yeah, there's there's that vibe of like. Or maybe uh, it's in her head, or yeah. I don't know. Um, this, uh, I mean, it looks good based on this trailer. It it feels like uh, you made this note where it it feels like it has multiple things in play. Like, and I think that's a like sometimes that can be bad, but this feels like there's a lot of different. Yeah, there's a lot of red herrings. At least the trailer yeah. is 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 showing that off, which. Given that it's a series, I think it's a series, right? No, this is a film. No, it's an actually... F- okay, well, yeah. either way, it'll at least make it a bit more interesting than you know the fact that there could be questions behind uh, whether it's an actual thing or it's just something of legend or it's all in her head or it's just this these other people uh fucking with her or it, yeah or what yeah you know it's I, it, well I just, there's I, like a there's like a killer right they say there's yeah. like a killer killing murdering kids in the dust um and then there's the question of is it supernatural and then there's the very common horror trope of this like woman with her kids who's sort of isolated and sort of under pressure and so <laughs> it's like a question of like what yeah what is this thing screwing with her it seems to be like there seems to be like some possession in there or some idea that she's going to do something bad. Yeah. Um, it's or, coming. Yeah. It's Hulu uh, beginning of October. Yeah. I, I do. What I do th- find refreshing is that uh, it's, it's very bright looking, very, very like well lit horror uh, by well lit. I mean, literally there's just a ton of light and playing with light and light and darkness yeah and but this time instead of being scared of the dark it's essentially being scared of the sun yeah uh, i mean i a, I like a lot this of it. pattern too in horror which is that like for a while horror was really relying on not seeing things and like there was of course that terrible shit in like the 2000s where every horror movie was like tinted blue or green it was yeah. after the ring and the J horror stuff 
where they thought like that okay that it automatically makes something look scary <clears throat> and it's nice because this feels more like 90s or 70s to me where <clears throat> you're relying more on like a scary story or imagery and not trying to like tint everything to hell um and to make it look actually more natural is definitely cool there's obviously like some pandemic in this because they're all there they can't breathe wear they your have mask to put masks on yeah. yeah yeah and so it has that like isolation pandemic feel thank um, god it wasn't outright about covid otherwise and, oh, and yeah. in a different time period otherwise be like ugh. Oof, yeah don't there's been, a, don't there's want been that. too many of those there's been a couple that were good but yeah for the most part we're we're kind of uh, over that i don't know if there have been too many of those but one is way too many uh, it's tough because a lot of these movies i feel like get written during covid and then they take a while to get made and like it's sort of like people are more than sick of that stuff but yeah. this look yeah this looks good i think um <clears throat> this time of year we're gonna start seeing more and more things because if you look at like when horror movies are released they're always actually released in like august because the idea is that you don't want a movie to come out in theaters on halloween because people don't go out no like people are uh, either trick-or-treating or at home to give candy to trick-or-treaters right going back to working at halloween horror nights one of the things i learned is that if you want to go on the least busy day go on halloween that's yep. actually their slowest day because no one wants to do that. Everybody wants to either trick or treat or stay at home and watch horror movies. So I think we're going to more and more get this push where things will be straight to streaming around October. And that'll actually be a studio saying we're confident in this. Like it's not them saying, oh, we're scared. We don't want to put it in theaters. It's actually them saying like, we want this to be watched. Uh, mm. when at the the prime time it will be watched yeah. and at the prime location which is on your television at we, home we want you we want you to subscribe to hulu not shutter yeah yeah and so i don't know it's, it's why we have the sarah paulson of it all involved. yeah yeah she's definitely got that like she's a horror actress right like well um, she is but she also has kind of like a prestige television uh yes clout that's as a good well. point yeah She's so very much that, that a television actress, yeah. And then American Horror Story, where it's like, you know, both. Um, yeah. Hey, remember her from this thing that was also scary? Well, yeah. here you go. She's fantastic. Like, she's kind of perfect oh, yeah. for this role, too. Yeah, this, I'm I'm pretty excited for this. Like, right now, I'm like, I don't need to know more. I'm also kind of a horror junkie, so I also think, like, this general premise, I wonder if there's fatigue, and what I mean by that is, like, <laughs> kind of like old timey horror folk horror is um we're really big on that and so like i think a lot of these get lost in that kind of get lost in the shuffle um they they do uh we're uh, uh, foreshadowing ahead there's one that definitely is going to get lost in my opinion but this one <laughs> yeah. i think has enough of um because they have the guy from the bear whose name I don't remember, Eben something, uh, and Sarah Paulson as kind of star power. And this one seems, at least in the trailer, seems a bit unique with, by comparison with having all of the other red herrings and balls in the air. Yeah. So. so yeah. Looks yeah. fun. All right. On to uh, the next. On to the next. This is uh, he geez, said with a called? cracked voice somehow. House of, oh, the Spo <laughs> House of Spoils. Now, ugh. I was so here's the thing. I was fairly cynical about this until I realized you made it. So, this is um a uh, a chef who starts a fancy restaurant in this like small town in what appears to be some sort of haunted house or a house that was like owned by like witches or i don't know the idea is um there's, well, there's like a curse. witch there's there's a witch garden yeah they said don't don't make any food out of these vegetables growing in the witch garden yes this is another this is amazon i think this is another we're going straight to streaming movie yeah uh, horror movie so it starts very much like yeah the, the thing that pinged me is i think the thing that pinged you too which is that we had the movies, we had the movie, the the menu, and then the bear came out, and everybody got kind of obsessed with kitchen work, 
Mm -hmm. And there's like sort of a, they're romanticizing kitchen work. Honestly, the first half of this trailer, I thought, why are they making the bear? We already have the bear. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. But wait a minute. It's secretly a horror movie. And everybody calls her chef. There's this weird, (sighs) so there's this weird romanticizing where kitchens are like the military or something. Like they're really strict and have these ranks and people use. I've worked in a kitchen. I worked in a kitchen for a decade. And I worked in really fancy places as well as like grimy places. And I can say like, it's weird to see that romanticize this way where I'm like, nah, it's really not that. It's really not well, they, what you're making it out to be. Well, th- they call it a brigade, you know, and yeah. then there's chef, sous chef, and then et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I, I think we're, these are a generation of writers that watched a combination of Hell's Kitchen, which is a manufactured uh visage of what a kitchen quote unquote looks like. Yeah. And on top of that, the the film Ratatouille as well. Yeah. Um and so like um, among among other references that now that that has turned into a thing. And again, the bear has this thing is definitely riding on I guarantee this was made by by someone saying, wait a minute, what if the bear but in a horror film? Right. But here's the yeah. so here's the thing that pinged me is this is directed and written by um danielle crudy or cruddy and bridget savage cole and they made a movie a few years back called blow the man down that is a very good movie um it was a really cool idea it was um about this fishing town where these um these women basically uh cover up a murder um, it was a really, it was a really interesting and and fun and cool movie, uh, and so like that alone made me go like, oh, I kind of trust them. Like I trust them to make a movie that I'm going to find compelling. Um, that said, um, the like this trailer that also had the bear in it, um, that movie blow the man down, but uh that's what makes me go like, okay, well now I kind of want to see this because this trailer alone, there's a line where she says, you've been watching too many tales from the crypt. And I was like, what is this the nineties? Like what a weird thing to say to someone now. And so maybe this is the nineties. Like, we don't know when this takes place. Um, I think it's written by someone that grew up in the nineties. Well, there's a shot of a car where the the car is old. So I'm like, Oh, maybe it is Mm. the nineties. Maybe that is a perfectly, normal line to say um but yeah i don't i don't know this will either this will either pop this will either ride that kitchen stuff and we'll learn like oh i guess people still want that or it'll fizzle based on that i think but i i i still like again very much suspect that this is probably very well made uh just based off what uh these directors have made in the past um like it's two it's two separate things, right? For me, it's yeah. like how the movie is made versus like what they chose to kind of glom onto and and market it um I, and make it based off of. And like there's I'm, nothing wrong with trying to ride that wave, but No, no. Uh but based on uh, what they're presenting in this trailer, I'm under the impression that while given the 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 previous writer's work that this is something well written but not the best executed i guess it's more to me it like looks very that's the thing it looks very samey to yes. a lot of stuff that i see on amazon prime and the it question has the, it yeah. has the boys lighting for and, and framing to, you're right we me. are starting to get amazon amazon like netflix ne- the netflix, ne- yeah, netflix look. has their own look and now amazon is having its own look too yeah uh I, on um, their original content yeah i guess my question my without when i didn't know who made this or anything my question was like are we still doing kitchen stuff um and ultimately i don't know the answer so i like maybe this will succeed because it's doing that or maybe people I, are burnt out buy that if, if, already if it does i think it will succeed in spite of the kitchen stuff or just because it goes into the bear but it's actually horror direction because season three of the bear of the bear was panned uh so 
it's clear that at least kitchen stuff alone uh kind of at a downturn just because that is the standard bearer right uh yeah but now i don't know maybe because it has this horror coat of paint on it 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 it'll it'll have more legs especially yeah, uh, um, uh, especially since this isn't like the bear but a real comedy you know or the bear but animated you know yeah. you know what i'm saying it I, horror I, is just just enough of a of a jerk of a premise like a like just another jerk of the the steering wheel to intrigue some people but uh as as as, as a top down premise but i don't know if this story can deliver on that promise i'm also based not, on what and, i'm seeing i'm yeah that's the other thing i'm not entirely sure i know what this is so it's it's listed as a horror thriller and i'm wondering if it's presenting more as a horror than what it actually is because like all we see in the horror is that she makes this food and then the food has bugs in it like that's it yeah that's the only thing they promise not, in this not just trailer it has bugs on it but she herself has bugs coming out of her right and that's sort of it. So I think there's this implication that like by picking this garden, she's unleashing some sort of curse or something. But yeah. it, it, that's all to say that I feel like this is kind of hiding a bit of its premise because I'm like, surely there's more to it than that. Um, and so I'm kind of uh, I don't curious know, of kinda, what they might be hiding here because it can't just be bugs. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's not just bugs. The the synopsis is that the previous owner of the estate is threatening to sabotage her. The spirit is. So I think the idea is it's making her food bad to try to make her fail. So I think there's going to be some sort of like underlying theme of being like sabotaged of like this threat of failure and pressure. Um, and I, I'm wondering if it'll just go in a, a different direction than they're showing in this. But I don't know. I'm definitely going to check it out um, just because I really liked their previous movie, but I mean, we'll see. Godspeed. I, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, it, it didn't grab me. So uh, maybe some other time. Yeah. Who, who's to say uh, this next one is also a movie. Although th this feels like it's a TV show premise. Uh, the Radleys. It's yeah. um, man. I don't know. This is, uh, we were just talking about, things that are played out vampire family we've gotten this for so long and that's what this is right it's a it's a family mm -hmm. of vampires and they're trying to hide the fact that and they're living in like a suburban area and trying to hide that fact it's like gritty what we do in the shadows um, yeah but this i i would say that this is different in the sense that like what we do in the shadows is so over the top with that premise yeah uh, and like like all the vampires they speak like old timey vampires they dress like the prototypical vampires and such whereas this is more of a weird coming of age slash this is what uh, youngsters figuring out their roots parallel yeah you know? it seems to be from, from the perspective of like the daughter being told like you you can't uh, you you have to hide this. I also just like yeah, the presence of yeah. Damian Lewis um, as I and, assume the dad. Yeah, yeah, I love Damian Lewis. Well, he's the dad and also I believe the uncle. I believe they're twins, right? You're right. Yeah, she has like a creepy yeah. uncle who shows up and starts yeah, and like... The, it, it seems like I, there's more to it. Like, it's like some weird, well, weird uncle doing creepy The difference is, is shit. like, I, I see this... I. I the thing that seems fresh about this to me, or at least it's familiar but fresh enough, is that it's taking the vampire family thing, but not just the whole we have to hide our thing, but having a family member that's like, fucking no, be the god that you're supposed to be. This is your heritage. This is how it should be, which is kind of like, I saw this as kind of a, you know, this could be a well overtread premise of the idea of second generation Americans being like uh, being told by the previous genera generation we have to assimilate while also having a um, 
while also having relatives that are like, no, be proud of your culture. Do your thing. Even if that culture is e eating people. Yeah, there's um, definitely that uncle is basically like embrace this yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's hard because that's exactly like the Baron and what we do in the shadows. Like, I, but, I, I, I yeah, guess for but, me, uh, like, again, it's... this, the, what we do in the shadows is, is again, just over the top comedy. And this is not, this looks like yeah. it actually has stakes. You it know? also reminds me of Twilight because Twilight like, has some of that too. Not, not, not the stab kill in the heart stakes, but maybe mm. those are in there, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, uh but it's I hard don't know. for me to get charged up about vampires. Uh, oh, in no. 2024. Dave, Dave, full disclosure. I don't dislike horror. I find it very difficult for me to give a shit about any horror movie. Sure. Just because of all the... By its very nature, uh, there's an abundance of it, which isn't bad. But because there's abundance of it, everything's i i'm tired of everything yeah so i tr so whenever i see something that has like a little bit of meat on it that's when i'm like okay fine i'll give you a chance i'll give you a shot this is also listed as comedy for the record oh is it now yes and that's I what think... i mean is like it's we got twilight we got what we do in the shadows we got just such such oversaturation of vampires that i'm like this is going to have to... Yeah, but but I'm guessing this is... Uh, based on the mood and the feel and the way it's shot, this gives me a feel more of like, this is a comedy in the way that The Bear is nominated for a comedy. Hate mm -hmm. to bring that show up again, but more along the lines of, oh, there's a funny quip with all of this stress going on. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. know. There's a shot know. in this where he's with the, the one of the teenagers is with his friend in what looks like an arcade and he stares at his friend's neck and starts taking his fangs out there in the arcade. And I was like, that's a little silly. Like it, it, it's it's I think it's the idea of these the, the young kids having to deal with the self-control of being a vampire and like how to how to contend with that. And yeah, like they have their family telling them, yeah, you can't. You have to practice the health control while I think there's the uncle being like, no, you don't. Maybe. And, uh, that could yeah. be interesting. It just feels like I've seen that a few times in different genres. So, Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, that's why I said familiar, but fresh enough. Not familiar like a vampire fresh. is familiar? Yeah. Yes. Very much. Uh, yeah. Very much so. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> also the radleys right. i'm i'm not i'm not loving the radleys as a name i don't like the I'm title like, at all. i'm I don't never like, gonna I, fucking remember what that is oh i'm never gonna remember any of these titles and what they mean dave mm. that's uh, i mean aside from wolfman because yeah, it's pretty simple pretty it's pretty it's pretty it's, uh, asked and answered yeah. <laughs> what is it about oh it's a wolfman oh okay uh next trailer is um. for it's what's inside. Speaking of titles Speak, that, because yes, there's so right, many, there's it's lives inside. There's there's so many blank inside ones. This is um a Netflix horror. It is um about a wedding party where an old friend shows up with a suitcase that's a game, and the game is is I'm pretty sure it's that Futurama machine that the professor has that swaps bodies because i'm yeah, pretty sure that, they all swap bodies that that created a math equation out of it is that yeah. the one That's yeah the one. yeah mm -hmm. and this looks i mean this could be compelling because it's it looks like it's going to be very weird it looks like they're taking that starting premise and like stretching it and really going places with it i gotta say i i feel like i know the twist which is that the friend who shows up isn't their friend it's yeah. somebody else who's in his body who stole his body and this person is doing is doing this to specifically find new bodies yeah that's what i think is going to be i think you're absolutely correct and uh going back to what you we were talking about earlier with the netflix look this really just looked i i it didn't grip me because again this looked like a Netflix movie and it definitely has premise, Netflix color scheme. Yeah, it does have the Netflix color scheme. It just, 
the the premise was not enough because it wasn't full not not that i need everything read out to me but it wasn't fully explained enough for me to be interested to ask what it is about right uh i i don't know i like the trailer being weird but i i see i really like i knew this was inevitable is that there's been a few broad body swapping movies that are exploring this uh suitable flesh comes to mind where like the concept of a body swap has longly been dominated by comedy and then there was that movie that came out i think it was called freaky the one with vince vaughn as a murderer where she swips switches bodies with a a slasher killer yeah yeah and i was largely disappointed by that film because i thought we were going to finally get a body swap movie that really explored what it means because body swap is body horror and it's weird how little like how many comedies would be like oh my god i'm in your body oh my god i'm in your body we're gonna have zany adventures and it's like no 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 you have new genitals like you have a new yes you have you have the body you, you you're a different height yeah you don't and so you know things are either you body. can't reach you can't reach certain things that you were able to used to reach or you hit your head on stuff you're and disoriented it's, yeah it's a violation like you're that's a the thing you're a different race yeah even and so like the the violation side of it has never really been explored and i think maybe that's what this might do or at least what it seems to promise to do is to it, show it like kind of how it did fucked not up. it did not provide any evidence of that in, well, in the it's, trailer it's presented more of existentially as a as a problem where the people are freaking out everybody seems way more upset or like fascinated or like mind fucked by it so i, I, guess, I get the vibe it, that like it, it's, it's you know the things that you're exploring you're uh, you're talking about to your point, the trailer is just showing me of like, we're a group of young 20 somethings, and now we're in the bodies of a different group of young 20 somethings. Like, uh, I don't see the purpose, right? Of I feel like the there's, it's going to be, there's going to be some sex stuff. I feel like there is implied, like, I'm sure there's going to be some fucking, um, lose me. <laughs> and it's just going to, I think it's going to spin out of control in some way. Um, where great. it's going to be more of a psychological for, I, thriller of some sort. I, uh, that's great. I would love for the trailer to have told me any of that, but it didn't. The at trailer least to is me. Just, see, I I don't I don't want the trailer to tell me too too much. I don't want you to. I don't. Uh, I don't want a trailer to tell me too much. I agree, but I want you to tell me something. Otherwise, don't have a trailer at all. I'd rather go in blind. So, I don't know. It, it's uh, again since we're just talking trailers. I I can't judge I can't judge the final product until I sit down and see it. But based on uh, since we're judging it based on the fact that it's an advertisement, I don't know what it's advertising. So at least or at least a modicum. Did you of not it, get the body uh, swapping from this? I got the body swapping, but that's uh, to your point. Uh, it, it, that's not enough. See, you know, I think that's enough. I've, I think it's enough to do. To the promise of body free, I've swapping. Seen freaky, I've seen Freaky Friday. <laughs> They're also showing <laughs> and I was that like, like eight. <laughs> they also show that characters are having some sort of bad reaction to it. Um, yeah, I don't care about them though. <laughs> uh, this is just could be old man yells at cloud, so we we could disregard what I say. At, um, well, I'm, I guess I'm curious of what more you'd want to know, because um, I, I I thought uh, as a trailer it told me enough to go like okay. It's a body swapping movie where things are going to go out of control in this, a really this, dark way. Right, I guess, but uh, th with this, maybe it's, may, again, this could just be old man, uh, and it likely is. Yeah, I just see a group of 20-somethings turn into a different group of 20-somethings. Everything looks drugged out. We have fish, I think there was like fisheye lens-based shots and stuff, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, okay, um, things go crazy. I don't know what the crazy is. I don't know the point. I don't know what to be scared of or how it's different or impacts these characters and them just being young and hot isn't it's not enough for me. I've seen that before, but that's because I've been seeing that type of young hot craziness for a long time. So it's an exposure thing for me. I don't know. Right on.
Yeah. But I th- I think w- I think I've talked my point to death unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty curious about this one but like like I said let, like I have sort let, of an idea. Don't let idea. me yuck any yum. Yeah, well, I have an idea y- of yeah. what a body swapping things that like I think body swapping is a genre that weirdly enough hasn't been explored uh, uh, in a horror genre. Um, and so like, yeah, I'm every oh. time there's a, a horror movie that has that, I'm like, maybe this time they'll actually use every part of it. Cause to me, I'm like that genre alone, just body swapping. There's, it's sort of a, a rich vein that I, hasn't been tapped. I so, agree. I would love to have for this trailer to have shown me any, any evidence that they would do that though. Right. And that, and that's, that's my, that's my beef. At least show someone waking up and they hit their head and be like, ouch, because I'm taller. Wait, I'm a woman. Wait, I'm a, I'm a different race. I'm like, show, show the transition from like a cis white dude to a non one or vice versa. Uh, But that's, that's wasn't clearly indicated in that. Like any, I don't know. Um, we can we can move on. <laughs> I don't have to next justify one, my nonsense. <laughs> this next one is, I suspect. All right, this next one's called Caddo Lake. Um, it is a movie. I thought it was a series because it has the vibes of a series. Um, it is, I believe. I'm thinking it's produced by M Night Shyamalan. It has, I believe, his uh, his logo, and it's the people behind servant which was a Shyamalan yeah it is produced Mm. by Shyamalan I just looked it up um it is very vibes right now it's just so it's it's a lake and there's clearly a disappearance and then some sort of mystery the fact that it's a movie actually intrigues me more because I thought like okay is this going to be a lost is this going to be a movie or a show that drags on for 10 seasons about a mystery but the fact that it's a movie, it's got, if you've ever seen Dark, um, that show, it's got the vibes of that, which is like missing kids and then some sort of possibly supernatural or just uh, like true crime, um, like history in the area um, mm-hmm. coming back. And it's all vibes, this trailer, though. Yeah, it's all vibes. It tells you really nothing. It's a dude in uh, a swamp. It's like a bayou, and it's yeah, like... Uh, re- remember earlier when we were talking about historical or location-based horror, like rural horror, folksy horror, right. getting lost in the shuffle? This is what I was talking about, because this... Because this... Uh, it feels... Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, the vibes are there, and it's not poorly executed vibes, but I need... I, at this point... Because there's so much of it, especially this time of year, it's going to get lost. At least it's lost for me. You're this is on me more. Yeah, this is going on Max. This is another one of the ones where like, all right, horror straight to streaming for Halloween. Um, mm-hmm. it, it feels more like a, a gritty mystery thriller, but it's definitely also horror yeah. and drama. I, I'm uh, For me, I'm just like, the fact that it's a movie and not a show, that to me upgraded it in my mind where I'm like... What I feel like would happen if this was a show, I feel like it'd get lost in the shuffle even more. And what I mean yeah. is it's one of those shows that like you'd watch a season of and then you forget about and then you'd hear that it was canceled. Yeah. And you'd and go the, like, well, oh, OK, I or, guess I'll never or, solve that mystery. Oh, yeah. Or it's a five or it's a limited series that is five episodes too long. Yeah. And yeah. so the fact that it's like a mystery movie that that does um, give me a lot more hope because then you know whatever mystery is presented in it will be solved by the end uh at least it should be so uh, i don't know i i never saw servant or whatever these people worked on so i haven't i've heard both good and bad things about that show um so i i know nothing based on who made this but like this is yeah. definitely like catnip for me which is like true crime horror is very much like I'll always give this a shot I guess. I I again listen it may not be for me but I'm glad it, god forbid someone enjoys something, right? 
Mm-hmm. I'm all about I'm all about that mindset. So hope, hopefully, uh, hopefully this works for you and that you're rewarded. I mean, it doesn't even have to be very good. That's the thing. That that's again going back to like TV show versus um, movie is that <laughs> I get so angry if a mediocre true crime TV show like drags on for too long. Yes, Whereas a yeah. movie, I'm like, all right, shitty mystery under two hours. Okay, yeah, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. of course. I'll yeah, gobble that up. The, the, yeah, the time investment. That's yeah, th- that's huge, huge, so huge, huge. This all this has to be is like baseline entertaining for me, um, and I, I'm into it. But like, yeah, I, I'm. It's it's weird because this is also like a lot of these trailers. They're they're planning it for Halloween, but I wouldn't call many of these spooky. If that makes sense, um, I yeah, I can get that. I mean, this one to your point is more of uh it feels more like a murder mystery right like these don't feel like things you'd throw on on halloween um yeah. to like feel spooky um which it it kind of has a true detective-ish sense to it in which it's like okay there could be some supernatural elements to it but it feels like a hard uh mystery thriller but with spookiness thrown in yeah, which is know. a good instinct for HBO. This because... is all, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, this is all speculation on my part because, again, to as we mentioned, the trailer is vibes. So, yes, it's just who's to say in a swamp from producer M Night Shyamalan, missing people, everybody looking very serious and concerned. Um, which again, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. Like, I'm into that bullshit. Um, so like they they know who they're grabbing with this I guess yeah, I guess I've there's seen like the news animals. and documentaries so I'm there's like I'm, a, I'm, there's I, a maze I, runner in there that guy is a yeah. maze runner yeah I'll character. probably watch the Radleys over this mm. but that's me um uh, what is next hold on oh I know what's next um oh Uzumaki yeah this. I don't know what the fuck this is. This is out of Adult Swim. It's clearly based oh, on some sort of um, comic book of some sort. Yeah, yes, I mean, tell me what this is then. So Junji Ito is a celebrated uh, manga artist and writer. Uh, Magna Kata, I believe, is the term. And he specializes in horror manga. Uh, and this is probably, arguably his most popular work. Uh, you can't tell by the, by the, an- this, this trailer is solely for people who have read it and are like, Ooh, I get to see an animated version of this cool thing I read. Right. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, yes and no, because uh, this definitely grabbed my attention. It grabbed, um, Oh, it definitely grabbed your attention. But in terms of like knowing what it is. Um, Oh yeah. Like, I don't a- feel like I need to know what it is. I looked it yeah, up. The synopsis yeah. is a town slowly goes insane over obsessions with spiral shapes it's yes it's a series of short stories that are oriented around spirals and this town uh your mileage will vary uh some of it is amazing the uh it looks great it looks very true to the original artwork uh it i it has a lot of high potential my concern is a lot of Junji Ito's horror, and this is kind of spelled out. There's this uh, YouTube video essay it's called Super Eye Patch Wolf that breaks down another animated adaptation of his work. Mm-hmm. Is that a lot of it is reliant on I see the horror on one character's face and I don't know what it's going to be. And then I flip the page and it's like, Jesus, fuck. Um, and, uh, the, and there's a lot of build toward, uh, and then all of a sudden hor- horrifying image and it's horrifying as a still, I don't know how, maybe it could be more horrifying when it's animated. Maybe it, it, I mean, the maybe stuff it will in be this. less, my, it, my, it, my it, thoughts yeah. looking at these images, like, I mean, I've seen so much horror, so it's also hard to tell what freaks people out. For me, my reaction for a lot of this was just, as someone who also writes... It looks badass. I'll yeah, as someone who, who likes to write weird things in horror, 
it's one of those moments where like the writer in me goes like damn i wish i thought of that because there's these these moments where you're just like oh i haven't seen that before i haven't seen someone's face turn into like a whirlpool that sucks in their own eyeball i was like damn that is a cool idea and like eat the face eat someone who's like pinwheeling um and and as their stomach's getting bigger i'm just like there, I, again, there's a lot of cool shit like that. I'm not right. going to deny it. My Where, my my fear is that uh, if some again some of the stories are amazing like that one, and some of them are like okay, that is creepy. But where there there's I, there's dumb logic nonsense that uh, that doesn't ride well with me. I have notes. I don't want to spoil, but overall my point is this is definitely the uh, overall my point is yes this is definitely worth watching especially since it's a limited series and i i think you would find it incredibly interesting dave and i think anyone that's un that's either familiar or people who are familiar with it will want to watch it just because uh they'll say okay what did they have to do to alter and change right uh and the people that are unfamiliar with it will be like wow this is these are fucked up ideas and plays with fears that aren't necessarily touched upon too often. Yes. This is the thing Uh, I'm the second most excited for. And we haven't gotten for the one I'm most excited for. Oh yeah. And because what ultimately this trailer, what it did for me is it presented like six things that I'd never seen before. And like, I, and like that alone, I'm like, well, shit. Like, if you're showing me things that I've never seen before, and especially horror things and weird things, I'm like, well, I'm all in. This and, looks and that's, so and cool. That's that's why this is, I we were talking about, like, a trailer telling you too much versus not telling you enough. I think bec- the this trailer, uh, bec- the visuals alone tell you enough, right? Like, Yeah, uh, I mean. You, I, I, if I didn't know anything, I wouldn't give a fuck about the plot because at least the visuals were something I haven't seen. What if people have noticed there's a theme that's been on all the trailers for better or for worse before this moment, which is that mm. I think every trailer we've talked about has been a, a variation of something we've simply seen before. Yeah. Um, it, 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 be it a literal Wolfman remake or folk horror or vampires or kitchen yeah. stuff or or like the the party game like what's inside is also very um uh what's that fucking hand movie that was very good um uh I, you, everybody's screaming the name Cato lake is very like true crime this is like again i know it's based off of something that already exists but for, for sure. me i was but like it's very, this is completely new yeah oh because it's because it is a niche at uh, still and I love um, it. Yeah, whenever ho- anything horror makes me scared of something that I've simply never thought to be scared of before, such as in this case, like spirals. And I'm just oh, yeah. like, oh god, these are some creepy fucking spirals you got going on here. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I, I think you're in for a treat with that one. Yeah, most definitely. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, my my critiques aside, I think you're going to be in for a treat. Speaking of so. in for a treat, um, mm-hmm. the final trailer. This would have been on more hype, except this is this is getting plenty of views. Um, this is the trailer for Rumors, spelled the British way, uh, starring um, or rather featuring Kate Blanchett and Charles Dance, amongst others. Um, Charles Dance. D- 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 the, <laughs> you'd never know the premise. Charles Dance. I looked up yeah, the premise sorry. because mm. this is a forty-second trailer. The premise is the leaders of seven large uh, like uh countries get lost in the woods while trying to draft a statement about some sort of global danger um, okay and that's the basic premise so that I don't that's need why to like when you look anymore. at the cast yeah the cast yeah. is like a very diverse cast and i think it's because they're representing diverse countries um and uh the big the big thing about this and Eric, I don't know if you've seen these films. This is from the writers and directors of The Forbidden Room and My Winnipeg, amongst others. So that's Evan Johnson, Guy Madden. Um, did you see Hundreds of Beavers that had a hit? Yes! I so love Hundreds of Beavers. That's not theirs, but it's highly, highly inspired by their work, I would say. I'm so 
goddamn excited right now thanks to this revelation so the now now i have now i have to watch these two movies too yes they're they're they're, well both of these movies they're a little slower than you imagine they are fine so my winnipeg which was the first movie of the two that i've seen um is a documentary about winnipeg um that's like this black and white documentary kind of about fables around winnipeg and it the idea was like I think he was actually commissioned to make something about Winnipeg, a very boring city. And he like turns it into kind of a farce around nostalgia and like really like it's all like him telling these stories in these very funny ways um, and like mythologizing very stupid, silly nostalgia he has. They're this forbidden. Makes me so happy. Yeah. The Forbidden Room is a series of vignettes that is very artsy. Very like it, it. It's when you if you saw the trailer and stuff, you'd think it was like an art house film, but then when you watch it, it feels more like uh, Kids in the Hall or I think you should leave. Like it's oh, more God. of like it's more of like abstract absurdist comedy. Um, and so like that's all to say that he's making some of the weirdest fucking movies that are just so in line with me and what I, I so love. F- I'm so fucking in. And this Thank trailer, you. yeah. Are these available on streaming? The yeah. Forbidden Room and My yeah. Winnipeg? Okay. I'm this have to trailer, another person is like the guy who did uh, Rubber has the kind of that weird humor. This trailer yes. looks yes. so... F- Love Rubber. It, yeah, this trailer, it's got like a little bit of like... Like, I think if you watched it, you'd be you'd accidentally think it's maybe a little twee, but I don't think it's going to be. And it just starts it, with them in a it, gazebo, and then it, it just it, does a series of flashing of moments including yeah. a giant brain in the woods <laughs> just plopped does, in the woods. Uh, the, the brain in the woods aside, if you looked at the flash and the symmetry and the use of bright brightness and pastels, I again it looks like a Wes it looks like a Wes Anderson. Yes, it has uh, there's one yeah. particular shot where you're like that feels like a Wes Anderson shot, but I don't I well, he does the crazy cast as well too. Yes. Kind of the yellow out. text, but I don't yep. think it's going to be like that. And like this fucking trailer because the the it's basically a gazebo and then a series of shots and the series of shots like cut off the um the dialogue within those shots and i loved the one shot of the giant brain because you hear someone go a giant brute and then it cuts and it's so like (laughs) weird and abrupt um yeah and this isn't even a trailer it's just a teaser so it's only like 40 seconds and they they stuffed a lot of what the fuck into it Yes, it's hard. It's hard to describe this trailer, so people just watch it. This is all to say I, I that guess, I, I think I, these. I, I don't want to see any more. I don't. I don't want to see a full trailer. Of oh it. yeah, neither. I, I don't yeah. need to see more. It's coming no, out I'm soon good. too. Oh yeah, uh, in October. Yeah. Um, um, okay. In it's theaters? all to say that like I, I don't. I don't know. I I hope I can see it. That's all I, I want. S- Listen, if if it's in theaters, let's make a date, dude. I think I it's in theaters. To. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I'm really, what I'm really hoping is that these people, they haven't been like on the fringes that much. They're fairly well known, but I really want to see them like kind of pop. I want to see this genre become popular because I think we're ready for this. Like this, like surrealist comedy, because like, again, I think you should leave was a big show. Like, I think we're ready. I think the kids are ready for this shit. Where oh, it's yeah. just like out of its mind. It feels very post cinema where it's just, it's like, wow, I didn't know movies could be this fucking weird. Um, or rather, I didn't know mainstream movies could start getting this weird. And so it's so uh, nice I to mean, see like I, Kate I, Blanchett I, and Charles Dance in this. Well, I mean, you know, everything everywhere all at once, right? Yes. That was, yeah. The, 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 there is an audience and they're both. Uh, audience audience like general audiences and on top of that critics that are hungry for something like this everything proven, everywhere all at so. once that movie i teared up watching that movie not necessarily not really because of the plot but because it was that, that same feeling which is like yep i'm so happy that weird things are becoming mainstream that we're because that was kind of the inevitable progress of film at this point the language of film and people being so kind of used to it yeah the miracle of that movie and movies like that is so many people said yeah sure do that yeah 
and they allowed it to happen. Yeah, the fact that that, that movie it. got made. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, uh, I don't know. This this looks so fucking weird and fun. I'm so excited mm-hmm. for whatever the fuck this yeah. is. Yeah. I'm I, I'm even further hyped after hearing the Hundreds of Beavers comparison. Yeah. There's a poll quote from Guy Madden who made this movie in the Hundreds of Beavers trailer. Um, because, yeah, it's very much kind of not the sim- same humor, but it's the same, like style i would say i don't know it's um for sure yeah uh well that's our final trailer so let's thank some more producers yes let's a big old thank you to christopher robert sparts esquire thank you thank you thank you to dan hackroyd thank Thank you you to dave ruff thank Thank you you. thank you to david knife boot henson thank you knife boot thank you to deborah is awesome barbara is great and cancer can go to hell thank you fuck Fuck cancer. Love you, Deborah. Love you, Barbara. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Dracula, the bus driving vampire. Uh, getting Thank all you. those vampire children to school. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to Driftless, Lord of the Wasteland, wants you to just walk away. Thank I you. will do so, Driftless. Thank you Thanks. To Ed Nog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Exploding Runes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Funky J. Mostly comes out at night. Mostly. I thank and you at night. Thank you to Heathcliff's helping handfuls. Thank you. Well, here's a handful of thanks. Mm. All right. I'll hop on in here. Uh, thank you to Highlander. Likes the way Tom says. Pretty sweet. Thank you. Thank you to Ombre. Thank you. Thank you to Impossible Worlds. We have your swaim and we'll release him for the cost of your subscription. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to Lieutenant Frank Drebin, Police Squad. Thank you. Thank you to Look Ma. I'm on a podcast. Thank you. Thank you to McKez- Mackenzie Fuck Shuffling with Willem Dafoe's Confusingly Large Dick Chill. Thank you. Thank you to Mercurial Oz. Thanks. Thank you to Mike the Lurker. Thank you. Thank you to Mongolian Throat Skanking. Thank you. And thank you to musical guest Rob Ritchie. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. We got some news stories. Michael B. Jordan is directing and starring in a new Thomas Crown affair. There's not, I'm just going to say right now, slow news week. Um, but uh, this is big news for me. I don't know. Michael B. Jordan yeah. um, uh, doing a Thomas Crown affair is just feels kind of perfect to me. Agreed. It's just... I, uh, I, I think this is... I, obviously, Thomas Crown Affair is his own thing, but it kind of... For whatever reason, it struck me like the whole... I'm, I was, for some reason, reminded about the whole, well, when are we going to get a black James Bond? When are we going to get mm-hmm. a black James Bond? When are we going to get a black James Bond? And Michael B. Jordan is like, ah, this is a different franchise, but here, here, we're going to do a different... Well... You know, he, we're going to... yeah. yeah. He also is low-key doing something that I don't think people are appreciating. Michael B. Jordan is, on the side at least, um, keeping dad films alive. So there's Creed, obviously. (laughs) But what we don't think about is Without Remorse, which is a Tom Clancy movie that he did about the character John Kelly, who's in a lot of the Jack Ryan stuff. Um, oh. he was I think it's the character played by Liev Shriver in um, Some of All Fears so like he has been low key making dad films um, and I really really appreciate that that he's like we need dad films um, and so the Thomas Crown Affair is naturally a dad film uh, and so like that's why I'm like oh this is fucking perfect what a mm-hmm. perfect way to use your power for good to make some some more dad film stuff. Agreed. And put his own his own spin onto it. Yeah. Uh, too. Uh I do love the fact that they got the Fall Guy guy writing the script. That gives Ooh. me that gives me uh hope and credence. Yeah, that's interesting actually, because yeah. that guy, um he's been in the um like he worked on Iron Man three. He's been in like the Shane Black like kind of writing bubble where he's mm-hmm. very good at doing like kind of meta action humor. I mean, the fall guy was filled with that. So that's an interesting choice for this guy that, uh, yeah, I'm very, oh, man. He also did uh, uh, at least one mission impossible. So like, 
yeah what a good what a good pick yeah um yeah i think it, it, it's it got all of the ingredients for success the hope is just let michael b jordan uh you know and, and get out of his way and i think we'll see something fun i don't know because i i think michael b jordan is a big component in keeping the dad films that's alive. what i'm Oh, that's what I'm saying. Let yeah. Michael B. Jordan. The, oh, get out of his way. Yeah. Get yeah. out of Michael B. Jordan's way. That makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, speaking of dad films, there are at least rumors of Ocean's 14. Uh, it feels like, of course, they're going to make one. Like every, every five years we hear that, right? Yeah. Am I alone? This one Am I so... alone? Or at least it feels like it, there's like, eh, you know, we could have another Ocean's movie, you know? I agree with you where, like, I think this might be a false start. They're getting the director of All Quiet on the Western Front in Conclave, and I'm like, yeah. that's a weird director for this. Yeah. Uh, maybe. But I feel like ultimately this is one where it's like they're going to be in negotiations for a while, and then he'll he'll probably go like, ah, I don't want to do this. Um, <sighs> yeah, uh, the... Yeah, the director choice just doesn't seem to be a right fit. And if he does say yes, it's going to just. Um, this is not a comment on the director's talent, but more along the lines of, well, I just do this in order to make money so I can make the movies I actually want to do. Um, yeah, they, they it, love it doing gives that, me that, shit. That, that. Yeah, it gives me that feeling. And as I mentioned in my notes, just. Well, okay, what's the purpose? Well, it's so that the gang can hang out again. And I'm like, okay, is yeah. there a story? That's no. why, like... And I... I, I yeah, so... Uh, I, uh, I, don't, I don't need grown-ups, but it's a heist, right? Yes. It's, so, it's kind of why, like, you kind of... You probably need to get Soderbergh for this, because I liked Ocean's Eleven, and then really diminishing returns as they went but i Agreed. sort of understood that the point of every new movie was kind of just to have fun and get rich doing it a group of people like it was the idea was to coast completely on charm because as a heist movie they're all dumb like the 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 heist isn't intelligent in any way but they got dumber fun. as it went but yes yeah. but it got it, it was fun but then it got like really gunked up with lore um over time where it was like about like their, their, their the the person's father at one one of them yeah. and like and then like it just started getting more and more like no. convoluted um yeah. and uh and uh and and andy garcia is like hey guys can i play with you too and they yeah. went sure yeah bring him yeah. back yeah and so it, it it got it just got dumber and dumber but still like plenty fun and are they all alive is uh, I I Bernie I, Mac is not. Uh, Bernie Mac is not. Is um Carl Reiner alive? He feels dead. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he's I super think he dead. On. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like I don't know. Just I think will we Mel, just let it. Will be. Mel Brooks step in and right in that the Carl Reiner role? Yeah. yeah, but it's sort of like I don't know. Like that you're gonna have to add because if you want it to be Ocean's 14, you have to add have to have 14 fucking people and so it's like are they gonna keep adding people are we in oceans 20 is it yeah. like the more cast the more clutter well they're gonna add uh, this thing the budget will be fucking obscene just to get the actors uh, the yes. actors involved uh, uh back when oceans 11 started right okay who are the main actors julia Ro uh, julia roberts andy garcia brad pitt and uh there's 11 of them I mean, there was 11 of them, but half of those 11 weren't as big a names as they are now. Like, yeah. Don Cheadle has shit to do now. Yeah. Uh, you know, James Caan might not, but Don Cheadle does. Matt Damon definitely does. Uh, and, you know, and so on. Fuck, even Casey Affleck, who I don't like, has stuff to do. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to pin down 14 uh, all those previous stars plus whoever they add on and whoever they add on has to have some name value to and they're probably going to be like approaching zendaya or someone that's younger uh kevin hart maybe if they're aiming for think, slightly older yeah and it's it's just it it'll be too bloated 
uh, I think. And I it think was already the, um, bloated to begin with, but manageable bloated, I, yeah, I guess. I think the better... It, so, like, the, the best thing to do is nothing at all. But if yes. they if they wanted to do something, I feel like they're not confident enough in Ocean's 8, which was a fine movie. It was fun. Um, with Sandra Bullock and Kate Blanchett and Anne Hathaway. I was like, that's that was, like... Doing the idea of let's take a bunch of charismatic actors um, and put them together and make a big ensemble, like I, that was that I think uh, that satisfied that for me. Um, yeah, it was a fairly was, forgettable film, but that's why I, I'm like I, the best thing to do is nothing. But it's like I don't know, do Ocean's and I have continue that. It feels like they're not confident in that I, one. I, they're not confident in that one. I think what happened, uh, the you know, one, it didn't perform well. Two, I think we were like, okay, enough with the Oceans movies. And three, yeah. I think the the biggest, I think one of the biggest problems with that one is the fact it was called Oceans 8 and it wasn't something else but happened to be a lot like the Oceans movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, because she it, was, um, I think one of them was related to Danny Ocean is the idea. Um, I, I, I get, I get yeah. that, but you don't need that. Right. Yeah, I think like it could have been. It could have just been a fun heist movie that featured all ladies. Yes. Ultimately, I, I, this, I don't need yeah. more oceans. Like, I don't need this That's, to be a franchise. Yeah. No. No. It, no. Especially, sort of, especially the actors at their current age. Yeah, it's sort of we like already the born movies where they were like they tried to do another, and it was like, yeah, it, it was. It existed in the early two thousands, and that's well, where it existed. We can leave it there. The, the other thing too is is that the primary constant in all those movies is the relationship between brad pitt and george clooney and yeah. they're already paired together in wolves right. which is a spiritual oceans 11 and as far as i'm concerned so yeah i think I, it's... I don't understand I, honestly we're probably making more of what is just a rumor that deadlines like fuck it we need clicks yeah but it does feel like one of those things where it's like of course they're trying to make it and it, it yeah. just feels like a, a case of them not understanding. Like, it's going back to, like, well, you mentioned Wolves, where it's like, why did Ocean's Eleven's work? It's because of the charisma between the actors, not because of the Ocean's brand. Yeah, and yeah. so that's what it is. The lore like, of Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, well, that's it for news stories. Let's thank some more producers. Yeah, um, let's. Big old thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank you. Norm, thank, thank you. you. To, thank you to Numino Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis Anti Disestablishmentarianism Jones. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you to pre order Jason Parsons' new book so he can keep making big feats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Psychic Bigfoot. Ooh, thank maybe he's to, one of the big feats. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to Rev MD. Thank, thank you. Thank you to Ricky Cilantro. Thank you. Thank you to Rosemary's Baby from Eraserhead. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you to Screaming Horse Pyramid. A screaming thank, thank you to you. Thank you to Steven. Hey, thanks, Steven. Thank you to the conveniently placed self-destruct button on the top of every baby's head. Thank you. Thank you. Don't press it. All right. Thank you to the Municipal Medicinal Arsonist. Thank you. Thank you to the Oatmeal Savage. Thank you. Thank you to the Tubi Terror Bunny things you should use while Rutger Hauer in your media diet. Yes. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. Yeah. It's, yeah, got to get that Hauer in. Uh, yeah. What, 100, 100 milligrams of Hauer per day, day. right? Yep. Mm. Uh, thank you to the Seven Bees. Thank you. Thank you to Tiger Drawers, Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Thank you. Thank you to Tom's baby. Aw, thanks. Aww. Thank you to Tux. Tux. Thank you to Vincent. Thank you. Thank you for Yorgos from the island of Crete. Thank you. And thank you to your mom. Thank you. Aw. <sighs> what a sweetheart. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, hey, hey, Dave, Dave. Um, what? I I got a question for you. What? Uh, and you know, if you don't, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I I'm gonna feel a little let down. Okay. But okay, if you do, I would like okay. to know is is there a movie that deserves more hype? You know what? For huh? you, there is. For me, 
Oh yeah. boy. Tell me, tell me, tell me. This is a curiosity. And what I mean by that is like, uh, like you wrote a note here in the doc and I sort of agree with it. It's, it doesn't look like a bad movie or anything, but it's just like one of those movies where I'm just so curious about what the fuck it is based off who made it. This yeah. movie is called little bites. Now it's not a bad premise. It's coming out on VOD October 4th, right around the corner in time for Halloween. You guessed it. This is a horror movie. Um, it's, it's a cool monster movie idea. It's pretty straightforward. It's about a young woman, a widow, uh, who has a kid, a daughter that she's trying to protect from a monster in their basement. A, a, what really seems like the Baron from what we do in the shadows. Like it has that, like, it's like this sort of vampirish, like, like ghoulish guy. Um, and it wants to eat her daughter. And so what she's been doing is letting it bite her own flesh and drinking her blood a little by little, little bites, if you little will. Little bites, little um, bits. And that star- starts spinning off into her, like, sacrificing people to it. You might recognize this as the plot of Little Shop of Horrors a little bit. Um, yes. Where the plant wants to eat Audrey and, and uh, Rick Moranis has to feed it other things. So, like... That's basically it, but with a fucking vampire. Um, there's no reviews. This is a complete gamble. The reason I glommed onto it, one, because it, the, the, a lot of the, ca- the cast interviews are like people saying, like, I had a lot of fun. It's very gory and, and, and bloody. And so I'm like, okay, this is going to be like a very bloody, fun, weird, gory film. Yeah. Um, but the thing that pinged me is that it's directed by a gentleman by the name of Spider One who is Rob Zombie's brother, otherwise known as the lead singer of Power Man 5000. And That's that, ins- that, was, that reveal was insane to me. See, okay, <laughs> see, that to me, I was like, okay. Like, he's directed other things. He's looking at his brother and being like, why not me? The yeah, thing, sure. The thing on top of this is it's being produced by Cher. Cher and that, Chaz that Bono. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, I guess I have to watch this movie that Cher and Chaz Bono produced. I think Chaz they, is in it. Yeah. They, they saw this script and said, take money from us. Yeah. It also yeah. has Barbara Crampton in it, and I'll never say no to Barbara Crampton. Um, yeah. And so, like, it seems like a fun little, like, you know, grindhousey, gory uh, uh, horror movie brought to you by Cher, Cher and her yeah. son. I will say uh, this is the, these are strictly the views of Eric Barnes. Don't watch the trailer. Don't because I, it I every every bit of the press releases like definitely Google and read the stuff that we're reading, but read it. Don't don't watch a trailer of this because the trailer kind of it's there, uh, but it doesn't express the the insanity of these producers these actors these whatever at least yeah. to me it didn't again it's more about the hype where i'm like the movie looks fine but what made it on this list yeah. it's just me getting to say like hey did you know that sharon chaz bono produced a movie sure. directed by the power man 5000 guy and it's coming yeah. out next month and you can watch it and it's like yeah i'm gonna have to watch that you know yeah. you're gonna have to see and what that is it, and that's and that's what made it sound fun to me the trailer just is like yeah it's okay horror trailer gotcha yeah, uh, at least to me it was. But reading all of this context with it, that's what got me excited because I don't know the mood. The mood felt very different in the trailer compared to what I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm all about it. I will watch this movie. I will refuse to watch the trailer. And in fact, I will do everything in my power to make sure all of you won't watch it either. That way, you could just enjoy the film. You sneak without, into their houses. Uh, that's what you do. You sneak, sneak into their I, house. I am a house sneaker. Mm-hmm. I'm a house sneaker for the internet. That's yep. what I do. Yeah. So killer. Yeah. Well, thank you and so much. And while you're in their Dave. house, you might as well take some stuff too. You know, you can take uh, stuff. What, what I could take stuff, or I could just log on. It's to, free stuff. I well, I could log on to their laptop or computer, or take their phone and go to Kickstarter.com, search for Mont Stores, and pledge uh, on their behalf. Uh, so they themselves could get some awesome action figures or just donate to support an awesome new IP that we can make some uh, fresh stories, fresh toys, and maybe some other media to consume uh, later that 
would appeal to your gamefully unemployed audience. Mm, good segue. Good segue. Yeah, yeah. And I, if I break into your house, I'm just going to take stuff because I, I, you can, <laughs> like, you can do that, and you can trade. You could just money. do that. It's yeah, legal. Yeah. It's legal. It, um, it's legal. Mm-hmm. And go to uh, just patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed if you're curious we watch movies every friday night eric you are often there watching movies with us um and so that's fun we have exclusive podcasts on there we have a store gamefullyunemployed.com t-shirt store we have a brand new t-shirt which is uh molder fighting batman you know the pair up we all needed to see so -hmm. check that out um and i guess that's it that's a sode we did it we did it hooray we slopped this up we slopped it into yeah. your mouth good and sloppy mm-hmm. say goodbye mm-hmm. bye everybody bye. bye hey listen our music is produced by chris corlew you can find him on twitter.com as the corlew or go to shipwrecked sailor dot Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. For more of his work, go to mvbramley.art. Our episode artwork is by Justin Brown, available on Twitter as Justin T. Brown or at artnessbyjustinbrown.com. And finally, additional artwork is by Starlene Hodge. You can find her work at starlinearts.com or on Twitter as StarleneX. Cool. Goodbye.